Alright guys, now we're going to talk about a really cool concept called guardrails. Guardrails is a feature within the agent's SDK that allows you to validate the input and the output of an agent to ensure proper usage. So basically the way it works is if you have an agent and you want to have an input guardrail on that agent, every single time you feed an input to that agent to invoke it um, is checked first by a function, the guardrail function. And this function can be anything, literally any code that you want to run. So you could search for a certain word or key phrase that you don't want to be allowed or you can actually have another large language model or another agent that is dumber, that's cheaper, that runs and checks to see some, some criteria that you don't want. So as a more concrete example, if we want to have a study helper agent that assists users in studying by explaining concepts or providing guidance without directly solving homework or test questions, this agent can be used obviously by a user, but maybe we don't want them to be able to cheat. Like, like we would want to detect if they're just providing the homework questions directly. We don't want to give them answers. We want to actually help them study and understand co concepts so that they can do the homework themselves, right? So what you can do is add a guardrail for that. So input guardrails. This is a list because you can have multiple of them. I mean, a guardrail is actually just a function. So we're gonna do async definition cheat detection guardrail. Now the input for a guardrail is a little complex. You just have to provide a lot of information. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste it from the documentation. So we'll do this. So it requires a context, which is the context of the agent. We'll talk about context in a little bit. We'll have the agent itself, and then we'll have the input of the agent. So this can be either a string or a list of messages, okay? And now the return type of this function will simply be a guardrail function output. So we'll just make sure to import that. All right, so like I said before, the implementation of the function can literally just be any code that you want, as long as it returns the guardrail function output. So guardrail function output, and you wanna to provide to this two things. You can do output info. So, so it's just gonna be any information that you want the original agent that is using the guardrail to have to know what the guardrail did essentially. So just extra information to put it simply. But the most important thing is this Boolean here, tripwire triggered. The tripwire is essentially meaning that something that you don't want to happen happened. So let's just say that we detected a word that we don't like, then we return true. If the guardrail does not detect anything that we're trying to prevent, then you just return false. That's all that means, okay? So if we wanna have an input guardrail that detects if the user is trying to input their actual homework questions, I'm sure you could come up with some sort of algorithm that can detect something like that, but this is the perfect use case for an actual large language model. So we can have a second agent that does that. So the homework cheat guardrail agent. So the purpose of this agent is to detect if a piece of text is part of a homework or not. So, so the name is homework cheat detector and the instructions are determine if the user's query resembles a typical homework assignment or exam question indicating an attempt to cheat. General questions about concepts are acceptable. And then I gave us some examples. This is common when you're making a prompt so it performs better. So cheating, fill in the blank, the capital of France is blank. So fill in the blank questions are obviously directly taken from someone's homework. We don't want to allow that, so that's cheating. Another example is this, a multiple choice question. So which of the following best describes photosynthesis? A, B, C, D. But we want to allow non-cheating questions, like very broad questions so that the user can understand concepts, like, like what is the capital of France or explain photosynthesis. Those are not cheating in our book, okay? So for this guardrail agent, we obviously want a more deterministic output. So we could set the output type to a Boolean if we want to, if we just want it to return true or false. But if we want it to be a little more detailed, we can have a homework cheat detection output that returns attempting to cheat the Boolean itself, but also an explanation. Models actually perform better if they have to explain their reasoning. So forcing it to provide an explanation because this is not optional, along with the actual Boolean that we need uh, is a good way to do this. So we're gonna copy this type here and set it as the output type. So now back in the guardrail, when we invoke this, so we can do detection result is equal to await runner dot run homework cheat guardrail agent. So this is the input of the original agent being essentially rerouted into this guardrail agent, which then gives us an output that we can use in our guardrail function output. But first let me import this real quick. So first we'll do trip our trigger. This is the most important one. So for this we'll do detection result dot final output. So we know that the final output is gonna be of this type. So we just need to access this uh, field here. So attempting to cheat. So the trip bar is triggered if it's an attempt to cheat, pretty simple. And then for output info, this is just, like I said before, extra information, optional information about the guardrail's output. For example, the guardrail could include information about the checks it performed or granular results. So we're just gonna return the full output from our guardrail agent, which includes the explanation. The explanation would be useful. So I really hope this is making sense. So what I wanna do now is just copy the guardrail function and provide it to this here. And we also want to add to this input guardrail. 
All right, so let me just give you a recap real quick of what this is doing. So we have our study helper agent. This has an input guardrail. So the way it works is every single time you invoke this agent here, the input will be first routed to this cheat detection guardrail function, which in this case will route to a sub agent that we created called the homework cheat guardrail agent, which checks to see if the input that was provided is from a typical homework question. So like a fill in the blank question or a, or a multiple choice question, because we want to determine if they're trying to cheat or not. We don't want them to answer homework questions directly. So return true or false if it's attempting to cheat, as well as an explanation for why you think that is. So that's what this agent will do. So the tripwire will be triggered depending on if they're trying to cheat or not, as well as provide some extra information. And so back in this original agent that was originally invoked, whenever it gets that guardrail function output, it will actually throw an exception if the tripwire was triggered so that we cannot continue invoking the agent. It won't actually invoke a response because there's no need to, the tripwire was tricked. So let's actually invoke it now. So we have this piece of code here. This is the particular exception that will be thrown if the tripwire is triggered. So we're just going to listen for that and detect if it actually happens. We're gonna test this first with an input that is clearly an attempt to cheat. So fill in the blank. The process of converting light energy into chemical energy is called blank. There we go. So homework cheat guardrail triggered. It was able to catch the exception here because the guardrail is obviously triggered. So, so if we now do an example that is clearly not an attempt to cheat, it's just asking something about the civil war, this should be fine. There we go, it did not trigger. So it didn't actually throw an exception. So we got our actual response. The main causes of the American Civil War include slavery, blah, blah, blah. So, so it was able to pass the guardrail and it went on to actually invoke the original agent to get a actual response from it, okay? So here's our trace in case you're interested. So first we go to our study helper agent and then it immediately routes to our cheat detection guardrail which shows that it's working. And then it shows actually response from this if it's triggered or not, which is false. So it's not triggered. So it goes then to our homework cheat detector sub agent, which returns an output type of this. Here's it actually being invoked. So here's the system instructions. The query that was originally given to the original agent is being routed to the, the sub agent here. And it returns this. So attempting to cheat, false. And then the reasoning is the question asks for an explanation of a historical event, which is a general inquiry about concepts. So that's exactly what we want. That's doing perfect. So now since the guardrail did not trigger, it's going to go back to the original agent and get a response. And here it is. So, so these are really good for one, making sure that the agents are used for what they're intended. So if you're trying to help people learn how to, you know, do their homework and not actually help them cheat. This is a good way of preventing that. But also if you have an application deployed that uses agents, you don't want people to just randomly use your agents for whatever they want, expending your tokens and your money on things that you don't want them to be able to use it on. So this is a good way to prevent that. One other thing I'll add real quick is that for these sub agents here, we are of course expending tokens running this sub agent because you know it does have to take the original input and check it again against another set of instructions. That is another LLM call. So since these are so narrowly focused on something so specific, what you can do is just set this to be a dumber model. So you could set it to like, I don't know, for example, the original agent could be GPT-40, but this one could be GPT-40 mini, which is a dumber model, a faster model, but also a way less expensive model. So that's something that you can do to uh, save money as well, okay? Now we just saw how input guardrails are super helpful. Of course, there's also output guardrails. So this is validating the output of our model to make sure that our model does not output anything that we don't deem valid. So so just making sure that our agent is not saying anything crazy or literally whatever you wanna check. So, so it works essentially the same exact way. So you have an output guardrails list that you can provide to your agents. So we have our forbidden words guardrail. So this is simply a function that is annotated with output guardrail. It takes in the same information, the context, the agent, and the output, because of course we're validating the output of the agent, not the input of the original invocation. So this output guardrail is very simple. It's just gonna to check to see if the output of this agent here contains certain words like fart, booger, or silly goose. So when it's invoked, we're gonna convert the output to lowercase. We're going to check to see if any of those phrases that we don't like are in the output, and then just keep track of which ones we found. So at the end here, we're gonna return our guardrail function output. So this will be dependent on if we found one of our phrases or not. And then we'll provide other output information like the reason. So output contains forbidden phrases and forbidden phrases found the actual list of forbidden phrases that may be useful to, that may be useful, okay? So I really hope that makes sense. I think it's a pretty simple concept. So before with our input guardrail, it runs before the agent gets our input. Uh, but this one runs after our agent has provided an output. We're just validating the output to make sure it's valid, right? So we're going to invoke our agent to say the word fart. So if it says the word fart, that's not going to obviously uh, pass the guardrail. So we'll be able to validate that. There we go. So it says found forbidden phrases fart. The agent said a bad word. He is fired. So pretty simple. And then if we say something obviously 
not invoking that, it won't trigger the guardrail. So, all right, that's it for guardrails. That's input guardrails and output guardrails for agents. It's a really cool way to validate the input and the output of an agent to, to ensure that's being used properly. So hopefully you guys found this interesting.